You spoke before about taking a break from theatre after having your children and also having a nanny on set for the first decade of their lives whilst you worked. I think it's really important that we have these conversations about working and parenthood. How did you juggle both? They're doing lots of campaigns for um, having childcare on sets in America. Do you think that's something that would actually even the playing field or, or help working parents? Yeah, I think they're very, very important conversations to be having. Back when I was uh, doing most of my telly through the sort of late 90s and then through the 2000s, the way that I was able to do it was that I have an incredible husband who at the time was also an actor and just went, well, what do we do to make it possible for you to work? Because, uh, you know, he wanted me to be able to carry on. I wanted him to be able to carry on. So we just thought, well, how can we do this together? Um, when more work started sort of coming my way, sort of a bit of a snowball effect. Um, and there's someone said, it was very interesting, when um, when I was pregnant with my first child, I said, I'm, I'm really nervous, you know, how do we do this? How do we carry, how do I carry on working? And someone said, this beautiful thing said, a babies are born with a loaf of bread under their arms. And I, and I tried to, I thought, what, he's going to be a baker? What are you trying to say? I don't, you know, is, is he a future Gales? What are you talking about? But what that means is that, is that the baby comes provided for. And um, so it's a, a, then a matter of trust that, uh, you know, the baby comes and, and you will have enough. Um, you know, I often didn't trust that. But it was weird because the more babies I had, the more work I seemed to get. So, you know... Uh, you know, maybe things go quiet because I stopped having children and I shouldn't have done that. No, no, I had to stop <laughs> having children. So then, yeah, we also had this brilliant nanny who um, came to work with me. And um, it, it was, re it, looking back, it's really, really hard. And talking to other actors now who are having children and uh, having to make those sorts of decisions, I think it is a, a, a better environment now where people are braver about saying, well, you know, if you want me, then you will need to provide for me and what I'm doing here, which is, you know, feeding another human being. Um, I mean, it was possible for me to do it and have a nanny on set because I was number one on the call sheet. You know, I don't know that they would have done that for someone who was a day player who was coming in and was number 25, you know what I mean? Which is awful because mm. it, it it should be provided for. Because if you want women in the workplace, because it's such a good idea, uh, yeah, you know, we have to deal with the consequences of that. So, mm -hmm. yes, I was looked after brilliantly by a wonderful husband and a great, very supportive agent and very supportive producers. You know, Verity Lambert, who was producing Love Suit when I did it, she was the one who uh, had me contractually obliged to stop filming at 11 o'clock in the morning and three o'clock in the afternoon so that I could breastfeed, which um, is, uh, you know, it's un it was unheard of back then. Um, of course, there yeah. are consequences to being a working parent. And, uh, you know, then you only work that out when your children are grown. And, um, you know, that sort of... Uh, um, removal from your child uh, ha has an impact on both you and the child but I do think that it's also very good for workplaces to see the reality of child care and what it the shape that it takes now because it is different mm -hmm. and uh, you know we have to make space for the difference yeah and I think that's so interesting what you said and I hadn't really put that into perspective of if you have a body of work behind you and you're well known and you've established yourself in your career, you have different, I guess, hold or sway over what happens. And, and you see that more and more as women establish themselves, especially women establish themselves in their careers, their ability to say, uh, no, I don't want to do that in, in regards to a number of things, um, or I want a more interesting character or I want this or that. But it's actually, like you say, it's the people that are emerging or the people who are playing um, slightly smaller characters that are as essential to the script that maybe don't have those rights or ability to have that conversation. Yeah. And, you know, along the way, I've had people, other actors, female actors asking me, you know, saying, well, look, I'm pregnant should I just not tell them <laughs> because they don't want to lose the job 
because there was a time when people when when it was okay for them to say, oh, if you're pregnant, well, you, you, you'll need we'll need to recast you because it's just it's not going to work out for us. Uh, and I was I would always, you know, t- t- sort of gently encourage people to just be honest with it because if you're if people don't know that you're carrying a child, you know, it's such a difficult and momentous thing to be doing. <laughs> To be growing a child, it's it takes so much of you, you, you know. Yeah. So everybody needs to know about that, not to be sort of hypersensitive and you know to let you lie down every seven minutes, but you know just to have that consciousness of something extraordinary is going on in this body, <laughs> and if you want yeah. that person to be a, a working person, then you know, we have to really celebrate and honour that. And, you know, Mm. not hide it away and pretend that everything's fine. We'll just, you know, we'll get, we'll, we'll sort it out. You know, let's, let's sort it out together. (laughs) 